Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to the Honey Optics YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use your Honey Optics cameras in the popular live streaming program vMix. And not only that, but how to use this setup to live stream to YouTube in 4K. A common use for the Honey Optics PTZ cameras is to live stream on the internet. And any live streaming system generally has three components. First is a video system, and that could be made up of anything from a single camera to a huge multi-camera system using a video switcher and graphics. But ultimately, that all gets boiled down to one video signal that you're wanting to send out to your viewers, and that is sent to the second component, which is an encoder that compresses your video to be sent out over the internet. And the third component is a streaming service to host your live stream. That could be a free service like Facebook and YouTube, but there are also many paid services out there that you can use, like Vimeo or Resi. vMix is a program that is designed to be a full-fledged video system right from your computer, allowing multiple camera inputs and adding graphics. And finally, it also encodes the video to send out for live streaming to your destination. For this tutorial, we're going to be bringing our video signal into the computer from the cameras using NDI. NDI is a standard feature included with all Honey Optics PTZ cameras. So all we need to do to connect the camera to the computer is have them on the same network. If you haven't watched our video about initial camera setup, you'll want to go watch that and make sure your camera is set up with an IP address on your network. You will need to purchase and install vMix on your computer. vMix has a tiered model for their software, which means you only have to purchase the capabilities that you need. I'm going to be using the 4K version because one, I'm going to be live streaming in 4K resolution. And second, I want to control my PTZ cameras right from within vMix and demonstrate some of their unique features around that capability. But even with the basic HD version, you could still use these cameras, bringing them in through NDI and live stream in HD. You would just need to find a different way to control your cameras. Once you have your version of vMix installed, the first thing we need to do is actually configure NDI on our cameras. If you remember from the initial setup video, in any browser, we can enter the IP address of the camera and log in with the username and password of admin and admin. And this presents us with some menu options from the camera, and there are a couple things in here we are going to want to configure. First, under the NDI config menu, the NDI local device name is the name that will show up to identify this camera on the network. So we want to be sure and give each camera a unique and identifiable name. I've called this camera Left PTZ1, and my second camera is called Center PTZ2. Once you change these settings, you're going to want to click the Submit button, and we will wait to reboot until after we finish all our configuration. Next, go to the Video page. Something to be aware of about these cameras is that the NDI output is actually NDI HX. What that means is the NDI signal that is sent out on the network is compressed, which makes it much more manageable to use multiple cameras on a regular gigabit network and without taxing your computer. So what that means is, the setting for first stream here affects our NDI video. The settings we're going to want to pay attention to are the resolution and frame rate. For our 4K live stream to YouTube, I'm going to select 3840 by 2160 and a frame rate of 30. And then the bit rate. The bit rate is really what's going to determine the quality of your video image. So assuming you are connected through a decent gigabit switch and your computer is decently specced, I'm going to max this out at 20,480, or that's roughly 20.5 megabits per second per camera feed. Again, I'll click Submit, and now I will go to the system page and we'll reboot the camera for our settings to take effect. Now we're ready to head over to vMix. Once we've got vMix open, the first thing we want to do is set our output from vMix to match our camera's 4K resolution. So to do that, we'll go to the Settings button up here on the top right, and on the Display page, we'll set the output size to 3840 by 2160. And we'll also set the master frame rate to a solid 30p, because that's what we set our cameras to. 
When we click OK, vMix is going to have to restart for those changes to take effect. Now with vMix back open, let's bring in our two cameras. I'm going to click the Add Input button on the bottom left, and in the dialog that opens, I'll look for the NDI Desktop Capture page. And here I should see a listing of all the NDI devices that are on my network. Select your first camera and click the OK button. And now that camera will populate our first input here in vMix. Let me quickly repeat that process for the second camera. And now I have my two cameras coming into vMix. Before I move on to controlling our PTZ cameras in vMix, let me give you a quick overview of how to operate vMix. The way vMix works, this top right display with the green bar over it is the program output. It's what will be seen online by your viewers or in your recording. The display with the orange bar above it is the preview monitor. It's where you can see a larger image from any selected input before you take it live on your program output. If you click on an input camera's image, it will be placed in the preview window, so it doesn't go live just by clicking on it. Once a camera is in the preview window, you can use the buttons here in the middle to transition the camera live. So for instance, click the fade button and the camera will fade on, or click the cut button and it will cut to the camera that's in the preview window. Also, with any input, you can click the quick play button and that will immediately take the camera live using the settings that have been configured for the quick play button. You can configure that by clicking the settings button and going to the options page. And here's a selection for the quick play type of transition and the time duration it will use for that transition. Now let's look at how to control our PTZ cameras right from within vMix. And I think they have a pretty unique way of controlling PTZ cameras. You'll see that in just a minute. If you double click on an input, it will open the properties for that input. You can also click the gear icon, it's the same thing. And in the dialog that opens, we'll go to the PTZ page. And because vMix has already added our cameras through NDI, it already knows the camera's IP address. So all we have to do is click the connect button and we can now control our camera. And if I close this dialog and reopen the properties, it remembers I was on that page and I can get right back to the controls for the camera. So that's one way to make adjustments to your cameras. Just double click on the input and make the adjustments that you want. But another really interesting way that vMix gives us to control PTZ cameras is through this green create input at this position button over here. What this will do is create a preset within vMix for the current camera position. And it adds that as a new input. So let me show you what this does. I'll click Create Input, and you'll see that it adds this Update Input 3 button. And if I look back at my inputs on the main interface, I now have a new Input 3 that when I click it will make this camera active on the preview monitor, and at the same time recall the saved position of the camera. Let me manually change the position of the camera so you can see what happens. Now, even though this camera has moved to a new position and is showing a new frame, Input 3 has a thumbnail that is a still frame from when we saved the position. And if I select Input 3, it's going to put the camera on the preview bus and move to the saved position. I can rename Input 3 in its properties dialog. I'll call it Center Close-Up. Now let me create a new position. So I'll go back to the properties of the PTZ camera, and zoom out, and click the Create Input button again. and it creates a new input 4, and I'll rename this one Center Wide. One thing you need to be aware of is even though I have two inputs listed, 3 and 4, it's really the same camera. So if I click back and forth between these while that camera is live, your viewers are going to see it move on your output. So if I also create some saved positions for my second camera, let me do that quickly. That will create input 5, and then input 6. And I'll call these left pulpit, and this one will be left wide. Now using two cameras, I can set up my next shot on the camera that's not live, 
And using just two cameras and switching back and forth between them, you can create a really impressive look. I'm just using two saved positions for each camera, but you could create all kinds of shots for your production that you can recall with just a click. As you add more shots, you'll probably want to keep them organized to make it easier to operate. And to do that, we can use these colored tabs. The way vMix works, this first gray tab will always show all your inputs. But if I click on the red tab, I'll see just the inputs I've assigned to the red tab. Depending on how many cameras and how many saved positions you have, maybe you'd want to put each individual camera's saved inputs on a different tab so you can easily tell your cameras apart. So let's make the left camera orange. And now I won't even necessarily use those tabs, but on the main tab, it shows me visually which inputs belong to a particular camera. So when I'm operating this, if I just made a red input live, I've got to select an orange input next. So now let's look at how to go live with our 4K video on YouTube. First, we need to configure our streaming settings. So click the gear icon next to the stream button at the bottom of the interface, and for destination, select YouTube Live Stream Now. Then click the YouTube Settings button, and you'll be asked to log in to your YouTube account, which gives vMix permission to stream to your YouTube account. Then in the dialog that opens, you'll need to give your stream a name and click OK. Now in the Quality dropdown, we'll select 2160p, and I like to use the 20 megabits per second bitrate. And now we're ready. If we click the Start One button, we'll go live on YouTube. Let me pause here a second and let's talk about that bitrate of 20 megabits per second that we selected. What you need to be aware of is that that is significantly more data we're trying to push through than with a 1080p HD stream, which is usually about 6 megabits per second. So you need to make sure that one, your computer is up to the task of encoding at that bitrate, and two, that your internet upload speed is able to handle 20 megabits. I would recommend having an upload speed of about 50 megabits for your internet connection to try and stream with these settings. So now I will click the Start One button, and if I go to the YouTube channel I'm using, you can see the stream coming in at 4K Live on YouTube. I hope you found this video useful. We're gonna keep posting content here on the Honey Optics channel to help you get the most out of your cameras. So if you haven't already, be sure and subscribe. Until next time, bye.